Sono Manuel Di Geronimo, Sparta Racer, coach SGX, laureato in scienze motore di osteopata. In questi video vi racconterò tutto sul mondo Spartan e OCR. Scoprirete insieme a me tutti i segreti dello sport più bello della Terra. Non esistono ostacoli troppo grandi, esistono solo motivazioni troppo piccole. Ciao ragazzi, qui Manuel Di Geronimo, oggi siamo con il grandissimo vichingo Sebastian Alcanson Conrad, un grandissimo atleta, uno dei più forti atleti di Europa, un ragazzo simpaticissimo, un norvegese che si è trasferito in Spagna e il secondo miglior atleta di Spagna. Uh, hi Sebastian, thank you for your time, for being here. This is really nice uh, from you. I said that you are the Viking, the a really strong <laughs> athlete from Europe, and then that uh, mm, you are also amazing person. Uh, the first you. question that I want to make you is, how is different move from one country like to Norway to Spain and work out in this different weather? I will explain you after a while. Yeah, of course. Uh, the weather is, uh, of course, an amazing part of it. Uh, but actually, I miss the Norwegian weather sometimes. Not in the winter. Spain is amazing just for training, go up to the mountains. In summer, it's too hot. But then I go to Norway. So, like now, I have perfect uh, training conditions. And it's, uh, I like the Spanish way because they are really relaxed. In Nor Norway, I... A little bit critical to Norway, Norwegian people, because in Norway you don't say hello almost to your neighbor. You go watch down when you meet somebody at the street, and in Spain it's hola, and people are really more open and kind. So, so that's very uh, cool. Change country sometimes can be a great way for improve your performance, right? Yeah, and uh, to learn new cultures, and then uh, be. For me, I'm getting more open from being in Spain. Open mind maybe. Yeah, open mind. Ok. Yeah. Allora, la prima domanda che gli ho fatto è che una persona norvegese venendo dalla Norvegia spostandosi in Spagna, com'è la differenza trovare un meteo così differente? Allora, lui è una persona che si allena tanto, poi ora ne parleremo. Quello che, che mi ha detto che è una grande cosa, perché in Spagna è estremamente più aperta di mentalità, ci sono dei posti incredibili per allenarsi. Where do you live? Sorry. Uh, I live in Albi, in Spain. What up is? in Alicante re okay. region. That's wonderful weather always. Yeah, it's always warm. Eh, vive vicino ad Alicante, che c'è sempre un meteo spettacolare e d'inverno si può permettere di allenare bene. E non solo, d'estate, quando fa più caldo, va in Norvegia. A questo c'è da dire che lui ama tantissimo la cultura spagnola, perché sono molto aperti, molto rilassati, eh, sono molto amichevoli, mentre dice in Norvegia sono molto più chiusi, non ti salutano nemmeno. Ok, Sebastian, you have one thing that I think you are one of the few athletes in Europe, maybe the second, from my point of view, that you work out a lot. Yeah. So, uh, The, the most critic of European athletes is we don't have time for workout. We have to work too much. So you Norwegian move in Spain, if I, if, tell me if I'm saying correct, for workout more, right? No, first of all, of working, we started our own business. In you are physiotherapy, Spain. right? Yeah, I started my own business one and a half year ago. I've been uh, working for a company earlier in Spain, so that was the main reason, but of course it's a uh, priorities. Uh, do you have excuse for not training or do you make excuses for training? Okay, we are busy people, but always you go up in the morning to work out and you do it in the evening because you love it. And I want to improve all the time and then you have to work hard because it's not fun to come to the races and feel that you didn't uh, prepare well. You want to be in shape when you are getting to the races and then you have to work out more. this is a wonderful point of view ok io ho chiesto allora io so che lui si è spostato in Spagna uh, pensavo per una condizione di allenamenti perché mi aveva detto che in Spagna si può allenare molto di più è uno degli atleti in Europa che si allena di più e che ha più tempo libero questa è una condizione molto criticata uh, dagli atleti europei che non hanno tempo che lavorano tanto e via dicendo lui mi ha detto che si è spostato in Spagna Uh, per lavoro, però chiaramente lui si allena tanto perché non gli piace arrivare in una gara non in condizione fisica preparata, uh, dice 
abbastanza in tono, questo perché succede che si arrivi in una gara e non ti senti bene, non te la vivi bene, quindi lui è stimolatissimo ad allenarsi, a migliorare ed è quello che sta facendo ed è quello che sta succedendo. But now tell me, uh, so explain me a bit your day, because I was knowing that you train twice a day, right? Of course, depends on when in the season. Explain. When you, for example, when it's out of competition seasons, it's getting like, I will say, 10 to 14 workouts a week. Yeah, uh, sorry? 10 to 14 uh, workouts during one week. Mm. So, so in the worst periods, twice a day, all the week, uh, the whole week. And, but then you have to make it periods with less training because you have to uh, recover as well. It doesn't make any sense to just work out push yourself uh, down because training is making you tired you have to recover as well okay. so in periods you train a lot but not that intensively and then you have like more now in the season like this uh, week that has been now it's le a lot less training because you want the energy for the race okay so it's important and how much to, time uh, you train a day Depends when in the season, but when it's uh, out of season, but we train most, it's like uh, in the morning, maybe a slow run, and then uh, it's one day, and then you make uh, intervals, series in, like in Spanish, uh, you do uh, in the evening, and then the other day you train obstacles, grip strength, core, i don't do that heavyweight training, but I do a lot of grip training and, and functional as well. And yeah, functional and train some obstacles, and then you work uh, run a uh, slow run as well. For so example, it's, what obstacles? <clears throat> it's um, a lot of uh, for before the Spartans, for example. I go and throw for one hour on Wednesday. I was throwing one hour just a spear, and then doing some slackline because that's. Even if you feel safe on the obstacles, you always have to repeat it so yeah. you don't uh, lose, okay. uh, <laughs> the, the, technique. lose, it, lose and, the technique. Tell me some things. And like two hours for session, one hour for session, what it means for you twice a day? No, for example, I, I never train twice a day hard, tough. Yeah, but It's, time. Yeah, time, maybe one hour slow run uh, in the morning uh, to wake up, for example, yeah. and just to and make my legs to be able to run a lot. Um, and then in the evening it's obstacles or tough interval another, training. Another hour? Okay. Yeah, another okay. hour, maybe half an, one hour and a half. Okay, so two hours to an hour and a half. Yeah, but not every day, okay. of course. Ok, allora, eh, molto lungo, proverò a riassumere ciò che è stato detto. Lui si allena tanto, fra, fra i 10 e i 14 allenamenti a settimana. Uh, va in base al periodo di allenamento perché non sempre ha tutta questa disposizione di tempo i periodi fuori gara chiaramente si allena di più quando è in gara si allena un po' di meno uh, cerca di dividere in allenamenti dove fa eh, corse lente, corse veloci, eh, ripetute eh, allena gli ostacoli, allena il core allena moltissimo eh, il functional ma non fa pesi pesanti a questo ciò che c'è da aggiungere è che mh, per esempio lui dice una mattina si sveglia la mattina va a correre, fa un'oretta di corsa e la sera è un pochino più rilassato c'è da dire che si allena tra le due ore, due ore e mezza al giorno infine ciò che è importante davvero è che eh, lui allena gli ostacoli per esempio ha detto che all'inizio allenava tantissimo lo spear e la slack dice che serve sempre ripetizione di tecnica per poterlo fare il mercoledì passava ben un'ora ad allenare lo spear tro, quindi Insomma, tanto tempo, cosa che poche persone fanno. E questo è il suo punto di vista. And tell me, in your training program, you just run for endurance or you also do bike, cross uh, training means like uh, hiking? I, uh, in, uh, when we're home in the winter, we go skiing, uh, cross country. It's uh, similar to the running, but not that um, hard on your joints. So you can go a lot longer. I don't do that much uh, bike, riding the bikes. Uh, I should, I know I should, so maybe I will. I've been thinking about investing in a bike because it's to take it to the next level compared into the Spartans. You can have more hours with heavy uh, strength training for your uh, legs. Yeah. So that would be the next for me. 
I, will, I think it will be important. I will tell you the point of view. Uh, why that, that affirmation? Okay, e quello che fa lui fondamentalmente corre e quando è in Norvegia va a sciare perché dice lo sci di fondo permette di non appesantire tante, tanto le sue articolazioni, non fa tanta bicicletta pure se pensa che sarà il suo prossimo investimento perché sa che è una cosa molto importante. Questo perché, ora tradurrò a lui, eh, parlando con gli, europei, con gli atleti americani, con tanti atleti eh, europei, una cosa molto comune, tanta gente fa tanta bicicletta per la parte lenta, per la parte aerobica e tanto eh, cross cardio, cioè tanto hiking, tanta camminata in salita, tanti trasporti, questo per non affaticarsi tanto sulla corsa. What I was saying is that talking with the best American athletes yeah. and a lot of European athletes, everybody do a lot of bike. Yeah, I know. Robert Killian, uh, uh, Alyssa Holy, everybody do a lot of bike and uh, cross cardio means like they go to hiking, for example, for one hour, they say, yeah, yeah. because they say we can't work always hard, work out oh, hard. No, no, no. So of sometimes course. I do one hour, one hour and a half of bike, two hours yeah. of bike, really relax for the oxygen of the muscles. And of this course. really helped them a lot to improve yeah. their aerobic performance and to recovery. Alyssa Holy, that yeah. was third last year, this year fifth, this girl, uh, was always simply for the run. Yeah. So when he improved that, he say, I'm running much, much faster. So was this the, the point of view that I was saying? And every American started training seven days on seven. Yeah. How many times do you train a week? How many times? Like a every week? day or yeah, seven on seven? Yeah, sometimes when you are tired and like your point uh, of bike, you don't get that tired. Uh, in your joints yeah, yeah. because it's more heavy to it's a good run. Drive. And sometimes then I have been better earlier. I wasn't that good to tell myself, you need to relax one day. But instead of relaxing one day, you should have the bike. So I totally agree with you. Okay. Uh, quello che parlavamo, io dicevo, insomma, della bicicletta, di quanto è importante il cross cardio per Alyssa Olay, per Robert Killian. Uh, se avete visto i video sono guardateli uh, quello che diceva lui che si allena tutti i giorni però delle volte quando è troppo stanco uh, mette uh, un giorno di relax pure se dice che se avesse una bicicletta potrebbe fare questa cosa ok uh, one question your how you work out means you have a program you follow heart rate zone or you just go out for running if i go i feel i know my body I look at my heart rate, but I know I'm not following it. It depends on the or feeling. But you know, when I'm holding one pace, I know where I am in intensity zones. So it's uh, it's not like uh, it's not what the theory is saying. It's the best because yeah, you should follow the heart rate or run flat and follow the, your pace. But it's more your feeling, uh, and if I feel well then I go faster. But in my program, it's uh, slow or like endurance run. So it's a, okay. it's a lot of uh, different workouts. And do you train the uh, carry obstacles like uh, sandbag, bucket? Uh, no, that, not that much. And I think it's very heavy for your muscles. And But I'm a big guy, so it's not my main problem. I see like today in Barcelona, uh, here on the beast, the carrying obstacles are good for me. Uh, but I don't train them specifically. Okay. Uh, prima di tutto, quello che, che gli chiedevo se lui segue un allenamento sulla frequenza cardiaca o va un pochino a caso. Lui dice conosce il suo corpo, guarda il cardio, però non lo segue esattamente perché sa quanto deve andare e come deve andare. C'è una profonda conoscenza eh, di loro stessi. Questi grandi atleti hanno eh, una grande confidenza, cioè sanno quanto devono andare su, for example, you know, for 400 meters how fast you have to be, something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Eh, sanno i loro tempi sui 400 metri, su una ripetuta, e quello che sanno eh, si conoscono bene. Sanno a quanto devono andare e quando in tutte le condizioni. Io ho chiesto se lui allena gli ostacoli di trasporto, mi ha detto di no, perché è una persona molto forte e a gare come oggi a Barcellona ha avuto la fortuna di trovare i trasporti. E questi sono punti di vista molto differenti tra gli europei e gli americani. Gli americani allenano un sacco di trasporti e fanno un sacco, seguono 
la frequenza cardiaca. What I was saying the last sentence is that that American athletes train a lot the carry obstacles yeah. and the every the best athletes follow the heart rate. They don't yeah. train like sensation. Every European no. there is for now no one European no. that follow the heart rate. I was talking with them and they, everybody say I have to train intensity today, yeah. I follow the heart rate. I have to go down, I follow the heart rate. And I think this like uh, like a trainer is the gap that we have from the American athlete. Yeah. That too much sensation. Yeah. Professional means follow some steps. Yeah. I can uh, I can follow that because uh, we have the Norwegian cross country skiers. I think they would have been amazing obstacle racers and they always train at the heart rate the zones. So it I think and I'm open for that and I agree with you. Uh it's more like when you're out and you train alone, I train a lot alone, then it's harder. So I'm moving back to uh, Norway in January. And the main thing for me there is to have people to train me because it has to be more fun. And then I can train a lot more. And then, of course, when you go to a club or something, you will follow the heart rate intensity. So, and that's, uh, what that kind will be the ski next and uh, step. athletism, what you will do? I will do, in the winter, I will train a lot of uh, cross-country skiing, but I will also do uh, athletism, uh, athletics uh, with, um, uh, with a club in Norway, then. so to okay. get the pace, you know. That's, that's great. Quello che dicevo che fondamentalmente il gap che abbiamo tra noi e gli americani è che gli americani, i grandi atleti si allenano tutti con la frequenza cardia. E lui mi diceva che ci sono tante persone che fanno show di fondo in Norvegia che sarebbero grandissimi atleti di OCR perché allenano sempre il cuore ad alti livelli. E questo quello che importa è che lui quando tornerà in Norvegia a gennaio implementerà molto di più eh, allenamenti simili perché si allenerà in gruppo che a differenza che da solo saranno più divertenti e farà uh, sci di fondo e andrà a fare anche atletica leggera. Uh, cross country, I totally agree, I don't know what to do, I would love to do. Uh, yeah, you should try. But now I'm making another question that uh, I think I know the answer, but this is really important. Mm. Uh, before this year, you were running in Nike shoes. Like, like a, a one person escaped from the home, you were running like, you wasn't taking care of the gear that no. you were dressing. No, no. Now you are using salmon for clothes, salmon for shoes. How much is important the right shoes, the right gear? How much the difference they made? You know the answer there, yeah. It's so important. I I would say I had um, I had the uh, salmon S Lab sense in six in uh, Morsin in the European, and downhill especially it was too slippery. Today I used the soft grip model. And it's a lot more grip. I, I can really run fast downhill. And I couldn't do that in Mursin because I was slipping and falling down. Uh, so today is a lot easier and the gear is uh, so important. Uh, From one to ten, number. I don't want to make a pressure on that. You have to have the best uh, gear, but yeah, it's important. Maybe eight. <laughs> Just I don't say it's all important, the training and everything, but you can't, you will have a lot more fun with good gear. And what I want to tell you that, you are a patriot. think one normal person, yeah. the gear make the double difference. Yeah. Because one person that doesn't know to run, if have the slippery shoes, can really hurt themselves. Yeah. And if they're good shoes, they can really enjoy yeah. it more. Eh, la mia domanda è stata, allora lui è una persona che quando l'ho conosciuto correva con le Nike, con le Pegasus. E, Sembra uno scappato di casa. Uh, for things like this means that uh, you escape from the home. One person escape from the home for how you were dressed. Uh -huh. e adesso è sponsorizzato Salomon e usa le Salomon, è vestito Salomon. Gli ho chiesto quanto è importante l'abbigliamento. Lui utilizzava, per farvi capire, un paio di S-Lab. Can you show the shoes a little yeah. bit up? Queste scarpe. Uh, in uh, Morsin e sono per terreno duro ed è scivolato tantissimo. Oggi ho utilizzato le scarpe, il modello uh, per il fango ed è andato molto molto meglio. E detto che se avessi avuto, questo me l'ha detto prima, questa scarpa probabilmente si sarebbe giocato il podio in Morsin. 
questo, questo uh, è il suo punto di vista. Io ho chiesto, dammi un punto di vista da 1 a 10. Lui mi ha detto 8. È importante l'abbigliamento. E io ho detto, è importante perché te che sei un top athlete, ma più una persona è normale, più l'abbigliamento, secondo me, le scarpe sono importanti. Perché una persona che non sa correre si può fare davvero male con le scarpe normali. Mentre con un paio di scarpe adatte si può divertire molto di più. Other question. You have amazing body. A parte that you are funny. How much you follow the nutrition? Oh, you know? Because that... you are the first Norwegian and North European person that I interview, so I want to know yeah. that I know that there is a great culture there of the food. It's, uh, it's an interesting uh, question because in Norway they talk a lot about the food. Uh, what's the most healthy, you have to eat vegetables and everything. But when you work out, I think a lot of people uh, forget to eat enough. So I'm very, it's very important for me to eat enough. And that means, yeah, I take some pizza, I take some pasta, and I do those things to get enough energy. Because when you work out a lot, you lose energy. And if you just, just eat vegetables, of course, then you will uh, not get enough energy in. But the vegetables are also important, so don't forget. Okay, that. no. So no uh, stop here because if important. there is some big and that are seeing, uh, they will kill you. But they, <laughs> I know that, it but it's important for me okay. to say. This is good. Allora, io ho chiesto, la prima persona che alleno del Nord Europa, eh, che ho intervisto del Nord Europa, io ho chiesto quanto è importante il cibo, perché so che in Nord Europa c'è grande pressione sull'alimentazione. Lui mi ha detto che in Nord Europa si chiacchiera tantissimo di nutrizione, cibi più salutari, tanta verdura. Lui ha detto, il problema che io riscontro non è mangiare tanta verdura, che è molto importante, ma mangiare abbastanza. Dice, io mangio anche la, la pizza e la pasta perché devo avere abbastanza energie per allenarmi. E questo... È un ottimo punto di vista, perché lui è super in salute per questo. Eh, cambiamo discorso. Lui è un fisioterapista, quindi andiamo a spulciare qualche segreto. So, you are a fisioterapist, so we want some secret from you. Uh -huh. Tell us some secret from, for the OCR that you can do, like a fisioterapist, massage, uh, trigger point, something that really make the difference to you. It's uh, more uh, for me, it's uh, recovering. I like uh, the recovering period. I take like uh, ice bath sometimes for your legs. Ice bath? Yeah, ice bath. Yeah. For, uh, just, to, um, just to make when you get out of the water, cold water, uh, you, have, you get a much higher blood flow. So that's, uh, that's something I do. Uh, so. That's important for me to be able to train more and, and get where do you a put faster the ice? Of the ice. Yeah. In uh, my vacuum. In your? In, in my uh, ah, vacuum. In at the home. Yeah, yeah. The, I just do it home. Really Cold water and then ice cubes in. Perfect. And I do that uh, how many, several really, times a week. How many times? No, uh, several, maybe two, three times a week after hard workouts. How long do you stay inside? Uh, 10, 15 minutes and then I go up. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just about breathing and when you first get down into the water, it's amazing. Do you know this we, the Wim method that is really popular about no. that? It's one crazy man that teach how to, to go inside of the, the cold water and all, all yeah. like that. Io ho chiesto lui un fisioterapista di spulciare di qualche segreto. Una cosa che fa lui è proprio norvegese, c'è da dire. Due o tre volte a settimana, quando fai periodi di intensi, si fa i bagni ghiacciati nell'acqua ghiaccia con i, i pezzi di ghiaccio dentro e sta 10-15 minuti e dice basta respirare che, che dopo stai benissimo. So, uh, you say that and uh, then I have to make you the last question. Yeah. Means, now in general you are moving back to Norway. What you will do next year? What is your plan? My plans are uh, still find a job there of course and uh, about the race yeah i know but first that's it uh, and then i will uh, go as much as i possible can and go out and try different races like it's a lot of races in the scandinavian part uh, in uh, sweden denmark and norway but i will also try 
maybe more Spartan races in Italy, Germany. So we will see you in Italy I, probably. Yeah, probably I will do one uh, Spartan race in Italy next year. I hope so. I can be able to do that. This is a really wonderful. Uh -huh. We hope to see you next year in Italy because <laughs> this will make us really happy. Also for see the level of the Viking man <laughs> with the, uh, the Italian guys and then uh, Wait a moment, I translate that. Io ho chiesto, ultima domanda, visto che si in Norvegia, è uh, che cosa farai il prossimo anno? Cioè nel senso, come farai per le Spartan, insomma, cambia tanto. Lui mi ha detto si dedicherà tanto alle OCR nel nord Europa, però vorrà fare Spartan anche in giro per l'Europa, altri paesi come Germania e Italia. Last thing that I ask you is, one tip, one secret that you do, that people for you don't do, something really original or where that you do? I don't know, for example, I slept 15 hours the day before, or I eat before the race, pasta. So tell me. Yeah. Well, Some things, one thing, secret. One, one thing, no, it's like, I don't think it's any secrets, but of course, I always eat a lot the day before, the evening before, but I don't think that's anything that's a wow. So it's uh, hard for me to tell something that's wow. Because in my, uh, in, with my friends in Norway, we do a lot of crazy things, but people, other people think it's crazy, but I don't think it's crazy. So for, for me, example? it's uh, like uh, to say something that's wow is, I don't think it's wow, but other people are thinking it's wow, maybe. Okay, uh, I will change so the question. Io ho chiesto, provate a fare l'ultima domanda, qualche segreto, e non c'ha nessun segreto, dice mangia tanto, non dice quello che può essere per voi wow, per me può essere normale, e via dicendo. Quindi eh, cambiamo domanda e pensiamo un secondo. La domanda che ti posso fare, eh, so tell me, uh, what, when you run, you are a really funny guy, you are always, I see you always smile at this. When you run, your mentality, you enjoy doing the race, like you run because you have fun, or you become a really Viking strong, uh, re an animal? Tell me that. Oh, yeah. What side came when out? When you get in the mode, and it's something important, like a big race, you get in the competition mode. Then it's not funny anymore. It's like really you, you get into a warrior. And it's like sometimes embarrassing, but when you get into races i get so much adrenaline like i did uh, a uh, just normal running race in norway and there was something wrong and i just yelled at the guys who were working with the race and just it was a bridge in a town it stopped so we had to wait for four minutes and i was using all those four minutes on uh, yelling to the guy who was working there so and i just have to say afterwards sorry but it's just the adrenaline so I try to have fun and everything, but it's competition mode. And then you get the adrenaline and you get another person. And afterwards, smiling again. That's great. Io ho chiesto quindi, vista una persona super divertente, sempre sorridente, durante le gare, se è così divertente o diventa una bestia. Mi ha detto lui si trasforma, diventa una bestia, gli sale l'adrenalina a 2000. Ho fatto un esempio che in Norvegia durante una gara Si è, hanno dovuto, li hanno fermati ad un ponte per fare, non so, why you were stopping the bridge? It was, uh, the organizers were, oh. was uh, the not good enough connection or communicating with the, the owners of the bridge and the... They opened the bridge? The, yeah, they opened it ah. uh, after four minutes. Ah. So. E avevano aperto il ponte, è stato quattro minuti ad aspettare ed è stato per quattro minuti a urlare. Dice, quando si corre, eh, viene fuori la adrenalina, poi dopo... Dopo la gara, sorridiamo. Con questo, io ringrazio Sebastian. Thank you, Sebastian. You are amazing. I hope to Thank see you. you in Italy. Speriamo di vederlo in Italia presto. And good luck for everything. See you in Valencia. And continue like that because you are not only a great athlete, but you are an amazing person. Thank you. Thank you so much. Grazie a tutti e al prossimo video. Aru.